Devon Byrne Larat, uh, I'm the owner of Adams and Butler, and I've got some of my team, Rachel, who you can't see, and we've Richard, and also Giovanna, who's doing all the organization. So we're, there is Richard. Um, Hello, how are you all? Very good. So um, we're delighted, what we decided to do this time is to do it a little bit different. And uh, normally, as you know, we, we send clients all over Ireland and the UK and Africa, and we're always talking to the wonderful director of sales who you see coming into your offices and you meet at trade shows around the world. But we thought it might be nice to get it from another perspective. So today we're delighted to be joined by Sally from Blair Estate, from Lynn from Canda Craig, and also from Yvonne from Turin Castle. And they're going to tell us about the joys, the trials, the tribulations of not only owning, but managing a wonderful historic property. So uh, the good news, these are all dotted all around the country. So a lot of you, if you're taking an exclusive use property in Scotland, you know, it's nice to rent one for a week or two weeks or a month, etc. But, you know, you could actually rent two of these properties and should perhaps do a week in one and another week in another. And you get a really good feel of what Scotland is all about. And they're in hidden away gems as well, uh, places in the countryside that you might necessarily visit. Uh, or have visited if you went uh, on a, a trip to Scotland before. So we're going to start with Blair Estate. And we had the lovely Siobhan from Blair Estate and Sally on on a previous occasion. And we took a video. Um, but uh, this time we're actually going to talk in depth to Sally as well. So Gio, do you have the video there that we can show? Yes, I'll just start with the short video when Siobhan was there. When were you there last, Siobhan? Um, I was there in September. September. Yeah, when I did my little um, road trip. Uh, it was sort of Thelma and Louise without the Louise, uh, but it was great and we did wonderful things and culminating uh, at the end in Five Farms. Not far from yes. where Lynn is at the moment. Yes, so let me just share that now. A short little video to start off to. Everyone can see a little bit of the property. So this is the wonderful drawing room in Blair Castle. Fantastic property, very spacious. Whoops, there's me. And I'm just gonna show you the ceiling now because the ceiling has fantastic emblems and a lot of insignia belonging to the Blair family. Very spacious, very bright. And all the rooms have that amazing view of the garden. I will be showing you the garden separately, but just to have a little peek out there and you can see the treat that lies in store for us. So that's our first one and we've got another lovely little one. And yeah, just hold on two moments. So welcome to the wonderful Oops. gardens of the... One second. That's the second. The beautiful gardens. So welcome to the wonderful gardens of the Blair Estate. Absolutely fantastic property in Ayrshire. 17 bedrooms, all with a private bathroom. And this property is available for exclusive use. It's set on 220 acres and 32 are in cultivated gardens, private gardens, that clients can have at their disposal when they visit. It's such a pretty property. You wouldn't believe the views from each bedroom. So I've walked through the property and every bedroom has a view of these fantastic gardens. On the back of the house, you have secret gardens as well that are hidden away. But this is probably my favourite view, those Italian gardens. And there's lots of little nooks and crannies for you to do, you know, private little meetings, read a book, chat, gossip. Fantastic property. Really a hidden gem. And I don't know if people could see, but there were um, tennis courts and there was a little swimming pool there as well, Sally. There is a swimming pool. We don't have the original tennis court uh, no. because the people who sold us the estate in 2012 kept the court. Uh, they live in the carriage house, but we do have the pool, which is great. Fantastic. So you all know Siobhan Lillington, who we mentioned before. So what I want to know, Sally, is how are you at Blair now? What came about that you bought Blair and you're doing what this wonderful renovation and like it's a fantastic property for people to have access to with an exclusive use? 
It's a very funny story. We uh, had sold our house in London and we were going up to Glen Eagles to buy a timeshare for one week a year. And we booked the flights, we were on our way there. And then my husband said there was something else we were going to look at on the Sunday. So on the Sunday, we drove down the drive of here, which is a mile long, in beautiful sunshine, turned a corner and here we were. Um, it's the first time it was on the market in 900 years. It was built in 1105 originally. Um, and we walked into this drawing room, which is, this is today's view of it. Obviously it's a bit dark outside now. Um, and we just fell in love with it. And that was it really. Um, we've spent the last 10 years renovating it um, and bringing it up to sort of the modern, modern requirements that everybody would like when they come to stay. But primarily it is our home and we live here as a family. Um, but when somebody takes it for exclusive use, um, which I think I know different people call it different things, but it means one group can come at any one time. So it's it's literally for, it could be a fact, we've had families of four here, and then we've had up 30, 36, 40 people here. So different kind of groups come, um, but it, it is our home and we love it. And it isn't always available. So we make it available probably for about 30 to 40 nights a year. Um, my background is I have my own events company in London. I worked at the Mandarin Oriental Hyde Park in London as a consultant looking after their incoming governments, presidents and prime ministers. Um, and then when we saw Blair, we realised to help keep the estate running that we did have to have some other income coming in because we don't own all the outlying farms that were originally with the estate, which was 7,000 acres originally. Um, so we bought the policies and the 220 acres. Um, it's hard work, uh, particularly this year as with the, uh, we furloughed all our staff in March um, and then they gradually started to come back. So we, not only were we trying to do our day jobs, my husband has another full-time job. Uh, in the evenings, he'd be mowing the lawn, I'd be in the greenhouse trying to propagate. Not done that before, but I learned about that. Um, and then our children, we've got, uh, I've got four children, but two of them are here with us. Um, and they're around and about and they were learning how to do various things, blow leaves, strim edges of burns and things. Um, so, we, it, you know, we really, really do love here, uh, living here, but we also love welcoming guests because the four of us do rattle around in here a bit. Um, but this house comes to alive when, when people come to stay um, and working with Adams and Butler. Um, and as Siobhan mentioned uh, a little earlier at the beginning of this, with um, Yvonne and Lynn, we all work very well as a partnership um, and it is possible to go from one to the other. Um, but at the beginning of lockdown, I, um, Yvonne and I reached out to each other as castle owners because it's been really, really very difficult. Um, and Yvonne then put me in touch with Lynn and the three of us have been working, I would say we speak once a week, every week, um, and how we can support each other and actually have got us each through this year because it, it has been tough. We have big challenges, different challenges to other people, but they're still challenges. But we're now really, really good friends and we have a good laugh. We haven't all managed to get together yet, but we hope to do so soon. Um, and I know you're going to hear from the others, but we're just looking forward to, you know, welcoming guests here again and what we can offer with wilderness experiences and um, just generally anything a client would want. But when they come here, it's their own home and it's fully staffed, fully catered with butlers, our own chef, um, but it's relaxed service and everybody just sort of chills. So any questions anybody would like to ask me later, please do. And thank you for joining today and Brilliant. nice um, to sorry. meet you already. Sally, can I ask you a few other things? For example, this is, is this the first time that uh, you sort of invested in a, a period property like this in the sense of this is the first time you're offering an exclusive use, um, you know, property to clients. And then um, like I, one of the problems we always have in Adams and Butler is when someone does it for the first time, and I'm assuming it is your first time, but you can tell us about that and any amazing, you know, maybe events you had, but when someone does it for the first time, we almost have to teach them what to do in a sense of, you know, how to work in the, you know, the tourism industry and what to offer and how to be like, not to say, no, we don't do this, but build it on as an extra cost if it's something the client wants. So, I, must, I, I would say that it's amazing to have that uh, network of two fellow owners of historic properties so that you can go through not only the bad times, but, 
you know, also the good times as well and learn from each other. Yes, ab uh, you know, absolutely. This is our first property. I don't, my husband ever so often says, there's another one on the market, should we add it on? And I said, no, darling, this is one home. We also have a house in England, but we're, we're probably going to sell that this year. And we are now living permanently in Scotland. But I, I don't want to take another one on really just yet, um, or if at all. Um, it is it is our only one that we've we've got. And with my background, I mean, I trained as a chef. I've been in hospitality. I've had my own events company. I've worked at the Mandarin for nine years. And what I want to deliver here is an absolutely top class service. Uh, all our beds are handmade. All the sheets are of the highest quality, but it still has to feel like a home and it's not like a hotel, but it, it runs a bit like a hotel with kind of invisible staff, um, but it's very, very much a home and it sort of has that feeling. Um, so yes, it is our first one. I don't think I will be adding to it unless our children decide they wish to add to it at another date. They must be very proud of what you've achieved. And then before we go on uh, to Lynn, the other thing is uh, I always think of the area where Blair is, is an area that's maybe underappreciated by people outside of Scotland. I think you have to be in the know to know about those areas that are, you know, south of Glasgow. And like, you're not far away from Edinburgh either. You're very reachable to Edinburgh. Like it's only just over the hour or hour and a half as such. So um, yeah. you must be very proud that you're opening up an un, like an unknown or lesser known area of Scotland. Yes, absolutely. And that's one of the things that's attracted to us. I had to be close to an airport because I was in England during the week. I'd be here at weekends or I'd be here for three days and then I'd go back to my house in Sussex or I could be in London. And I have to say, I don't miss the traveling right now. But we are only 25 minutes from Glasgow Airport. We're 25 minutes from Prestwick where private jets can land. Uh, we're 30 minutes into the centre and people who come, they actually say, you said you were 25 minutes from the airport, but we really didn't think you were. And we are 25 minutes, uh, but we are in the middle of nowhere, but we're only 15 minutes from the beautiful Ayrshire coast. And there's massive amounts of history um, mm. around here. And we are the original Blair Castle. It's just, we don't call it that. We are older than Blair Apple Castle, <laughs> which is known as Blair Castle, but because we don't want to mix the branding up, we only ever, we just call ourselves Blair Estate or Blair House, we, but we are actually a castle. Um, and it's very historical. It's slightly unknown here. And we are, I would say we're a hidden gem, but then we're only an hour and 10 minutes from Edinburgh as well. Yeah. So we're, you know, a good location to explore the Highlands, you know, up towards the Trossachs anywhere, but still come back here as well. And we, you can also land a helicopter if you felt like it. Brilliant. And then uh, the other thing as well, being a hidden gem for those clients who want to be hidden away or who don't necessarily want people to know they're in the locality or in Scotland is the perfect yeah. option. So that's brilliant. Thanks a million, Sally, and thanks a million for joining us. So we're Thank going you. to go on to another lovely property, Canda Craig. And uh, if any of you saw one of the first webinars we did in Scotland, I was up in Five Arms, and this property isn't far away. It's that amazing area. Um, it has so much to offer between, you know, forests, between the distilleries nearby, between the mountains, there's so much fishing, there's everything. So um, we're, well, for, we're delighted to welcome Lynn, the owner of Canter Craig, and also Frederica is here as well. Yes. So what we're going to do is we're going to show a quick video so people get a sense of place with Canter Craig, and then uh, we're going to ask Frederica to show us some images as well. So uh, because we haven't had Canter Craig on at all before, so I know a lot of people it'll be new to them. Uh, so we'll start off with the video. So Gio, up to you now. Great. Here we go. Amazing views.
Brilliant. So now we're going to uh, meet Frederica, who's going to show us a presentation on the property as well. So I'm going to share the screen. Let me know if uh, it works. And Frederica um, is also known as the Italian Gilly because she is also an expert in fishing. So, uh, and oh no, well, it's 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 a bit more than just fishing. Gilly, you, I'm I'm using actually the original meaning of the word Gilly, which was a little bit of like this Renaissance man of the Highlands. Uh, normally a man, not a woman, but uh, someone who would basically know his way around fishing, shooting, stalking, um, and uh, really the ways of the of life in the Highlands. Uh, yeah, <laughs> fantastic, because it's perfect property for that as well. And mm. as I said, a good marriage with the other properties. So yep. take it away. So can you see the, the, the images? Sir? Yes. So um, the Kanda Craig, um, the, the, the sort of the sentence that probably summarizes and encapsulates really um, what this is all about is our setting. You know, um, the location is, is, is stunning, as you said. And uh, the, the, the thing that we like the most about it is that it's right in the center or right in the heart of the largest national park in the UK, the Cairngorms National Park. This national park was established in 2003, um, and it's a huge, vast area. Um, and you can see how beautifully Kanda Craig is nestled in it and surrounded by mountains, although, you know, we call them hills, rivers, um, perfect place to reconnect with nature. The air is clean. Um, in fact, I don't know if it's all this sort of lack of aeroplanes flying, but we've, we, are, we are actually experiencing some amazing skies. Um, difficult to know if it's just us being more able to take it in, having more time, or if it's, if it's literally the fact that the air is, is even cleaner than it was. But, you know, uh, even before uh, this lockdown, um, you know, you couldn't have had a, a better environment. So Cantor Craig um, goes oh, back. Oh, could you go full screen, please? Sorry. Oh. Sorry. It's me. Yeah, let me just go to my... Chrome, is it my presentation that's not full screen? Don't worry if you can't get it. There it is at the bottom. Yeah, it's at the bottom, but um, I can't find where I can. Do you want to share it maybe? No, no, it's okay. Carry on, I sorry. Have, I should have, um, I, I don't know how I, I can get it. The two arrows beside the printer, um, if you go there where you were, there's a printer button and then beside there's the two arrows. Try that one. I think it will stretch. Where, where, where? Which printer, sorry? Yeah, exactly where you're, um, there's a little print, if you, if you go- At the bottom of the page. At the bottom of the page. There, try that one. That's it. Thank you so much. Is that working now? Perfect. Yes, thanks. Sorry about that. So Kanda Craig has got 12 uh, uh, bedrooms and 12 uh, private bathrooms. It's only 40 miles from the, for, from the local sort of international airport of Aberdeen. So it's very well connected, but in the, at the same time, you know, in the middle of the national park, has got something which is quite rare in the highlands and it's a historical walled garden. This garden goes back to the Victorian times, is a really mature garden. And you've seen in the video, some glimpses of it is a very, very special garden. Um, there is an on-site locker, literally, you know, short walk from the house. Um, uh, the, there is a policy where, uh, so own a piece of the River Dawn that's owned by Lynn um, and Mark and uh, that the guests can use for fishing. The estate is private, but is also part of a larger estate called the Candergraig Estate, where it is possible to organize further activities. And uh, what's beautiful about um, this property is also the fact that there is a house manager and a housekeeper who have lived on site and have looked after this house for over 20 years. So they go back to the previous owner and Lynn will tell you more about it maybe, but it's such a um, sort of reassuring and, uh, um, you know, thing to know that you are in very, very good hands. This is some images of the, of the interiors, the stunning uh, drawing room, um, the ceiling, the panelling, 
Um, and then uh, this very special room here, which is the whiskey library. Part of the, of the, of the experience includes complimentary access to over a hundred whiskies and 30 gins. Um, interestingly, we are only an hour from Speyside. So if anyone wants to really have an immersive whiskey experience, uh, they're very, very close to the distilleries and they can also enjoy a dram in the evening in this beautiful room. But lots of gin distilleries have popped up recently. So we may Make sure that we feature those as well. This is the famous dining room of Cander Craig. It was decorated by Billy Connolly, its previous owner, um, and uh, he celebrated his 60th birthday here and he famously entertained his celebrity guests at the Lonach Games. So Strathdon, where Cander Craig is, is home to the oldest Highland Games in the country, together with Bremar, the Lonach Games. So um, you mentioned, uh, uh, Sally mentioned the Blair Athol, where uh, you've got the Athol Highlanders, uh, one of the two, you know, our private armies uh, in Scotland and they the Athol Islanders can carry a weapon none of the others can because they they have been stripped of the right because they were being noted during the Jacobite uprisings but the Lona Highlanders as well they can carry a spear and they are an amazing sight to watch on the day of the Lona games um, when uh, we have a party at Cander Craig it's a it's a proper uh, party. Nothing is better than a Cayley. I've never seen a party in Scotland not be successful because there is music, there's dancing, there's, uh, um, there's fun. And uh, so the, the drawing room uh, can be cleared in the evening um, for the guests to enjoy uh, some traditional music. Uh, uh, lots of locals uh, play instruments. Uh, uh, we have access to some amazing, actually talented musicians and we can host a Kaylee, which is a traditional dance. And I mean, we are really starved of it now because with all this has been impossible to, to actually, um, you know, have a Kaylee. And a lot of people in Scotland are proper missing that. <laughs> we have a full size snooker table um, with also a little corner uh, there for um, children or teenagers to crash if they want to watch the telly and be away from the parents. Uh, here is some images of the lovely bedrooms, which are traditional and, uh, um, uh, and, and you know, the, the one on the top left there is featuring the original Wallace Tartan. The Wallaces were the owners of the estate, the Candle Craig estate. Uh, lots of references to previous history and heritage of the area, which is incredibly rich and is really, um, you know, the Dawn Valley is just uh, next to the D Valley. You, you mentioned the Five Farms, so it was only half an hour from Balmoral Castle um, and the Five Farms. And then on the other side, uh, 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 just maybe 45 minutes to Speyside, where it's whiskey country. So we are so well placed to be both secluded and private, but also having access to this sort of activities that, that can be added to the stay. Um, some images of the bathrooms, uh, some lovely, um, you know, uh, tubs uh, um, that um, are uh, original from the house, but Lynn has also taken time to refurbish some of the bathrooms, or, or rather all of the bathrooms since she's owned the house. So she'll tell you more about that, but there's an image there of a newly refurbished shower. And then here's all the activities that can be um, had while staying at Cander Craig. So um, we've got mountain biking, clay pigeon shooting, fishing, which is, you know, the dawn is, is uh, as I said, part of the uh, part of the river is, is owned by the house, but next to that you've got the D, you've got Lockhans, you can do trout, you can do salmon, and we we'll work with very experienced local setups that make it fun and they teach if someone is a new, um, you know, fisherman and wants to learn, or they can cater for more skilled, uh, you know, people that want to instead perfect their fishing. Uh, we've got, um, we've worked with people that organize mini Highland games, which are so much fun. And our lovely caterer can do, again, someone who's worked in the house for years and is, knows, is very knowledgeable and, and uh, reliable and, and, uh, um, and very good at using all the local produce. Uh, he's in that picture there on the top right. And he can do an informal dinner um, in the garden with a barbecue, but he can also um, host a, a bit more a more formal and elegant uh, dining experience in the dining room. And here's an image of this stunning garden. You can see how incredible it is, um, how mature and uh, how um, beautiful. And, and that lawn there that you can see um, is a perfect spot for a picnic. 
Um, Lynn has taken a lot of care to make sure that the house is very um, eco-friendly and uh, Lynn and Mark have built the biomass heating system so it's super warm in the house. Um, the lighting is all LED. The house manager and, and the housekeeper, as I said to you, they work, they've worked there for 20 years and they take good care making sure that all the rubbish and all the waste is, cater, is, is, is recycled and they do not use any chemicals. So um, everything is cleaned with um, you know, water or uh, you know, no chemicals are, are being used in the house. Um, and uh, there's some news that I think Lynn will now talk about, which is the fact that she's really invested in this community um, and she's um, working with the locals, both in engaging them in, in supplying the activities to the house, but also um, she's added um, a bar for the community of Strathdon and um, the Steading. And uh, uh, they've also purchased the Lonak Hotel, which is a work in progress. Just unmute myself there. That's brilliant. Thanks, so and Frederica. So you have an idea of where it is and, you know, a sense of place. So, Lynn, can we ask you, how come you wound up being the Panda Craig? Um, well, thanks, Frederica, for going over those pictures. I am pretty shy and my heart is also beating like Sally's was. So um, nice to meet you all. Um, we were living abroad. My husband's from the US. And so we kept having to travel back to Scotland to visit my family. And we could never find anywhere suitable that was you know, big enough to host other family members to save us having to go around each household to say hello. Um, and so the plan was that we were going to buy, believe it or not, a static caravan to put on my parents' site for when we would come and visit. The static caravan um, did not happen and we ended up visiting Cander Craig and falling in love. So um, sometimes we wish we'd only bought the 11,000 pound caravan, but instead uh, we've got this lovely home. We instantly fell in love with it. Um, my husband being American loves Scotland and uh, just being in the Highlands and being so private, we, we ended up buying it and moved the family there with my husband still working abroad. Luckily only in the Netherlands at this point and he could fly over every weekend. So we lived there for a few months and then we had a few private parties. We loved to entertain and as family members and friends were coming to have fun in the house, we thought, Do you know what? This is such an amazing place to have a party. Um, let's open it up to others. So then we decided to go down the exclusive use route where we would open it up a few times a year to select guests. And that's um, where we are now. Brilliant. So it really is fantastic. And one thing I, I love in particular about all of these properties is the hidden gardens as well, um, you know, that, that are around it. But can you tell us, can you bring us through the property and tell us about the restoration you did and the work that you did on the interiors and the property indeed itself? Yeah, sure. So um, the house had been owned in the last 30 years by two families. Um, but just before we bought it, we bought it from Billy Conley and his wife. They had it for 15 years and they had done a great job buying up the walled garden, which had been sold off many years ago and just restoring the outside and very good at maintaining the house. Um, the previous owners to them was Anita Roddick of the Body Shop. Wow. And they had spent a significant amount of money updating the house, the plumbing, the electricals and the interior design. And the quality of the interiors were outstanding. But when we took it over, those interiors were 25, 30 years old. So um, what we've done since 2014, because we lived in the house was every room we've had to do something to, not because we had to, but because I love interiors, unfortunately, and having 12 bedrooms and bathrooms to decorate, it's just a never ending project. Um, I'm sure Sally and Yvonne will agree. What you just, you know, you walk around and nitpick everything. Oh, that wallpaper needs changing or this carpet. And so it's just, it's been never ending, but it's been so fun and, and just, um, yeah, really, really exciting to see where it's come now. And I think it's lovely that you still have the same manager in the property. 
because you've got that continuation of the history and tradition of the property, as well as the new blood and passion invested by yourself. Yes, and that was a no brainer for us because Paul and Martine are our manager and housekeeper. They're just the loveliest couple. They live on site. They have done for 25 years, I believe now. And because they worked for the Connellys, they were used to dealing with a very high level individual. Um, they've entertained celebrities. They're the most discreet couple I've ever met. And it's been, it's taken us a few years to actually get some stories out of them about what went on in the house with guests. Um, but there's been some fun, fun parties had over the years they are definitely. Fantastic. And do you want to tell us about the bar and the uh, little hotel as well that you've nearby? Two miles away, I think the hotel is? It is, yes. So, um, you know, what happens when you have a place like this, you get bitten by the hospitality bug and you want to just go and buy another property, as Sally had mentioned. So the local hotel was staring us in the face and um, it's not in a very good state of repair. Like a lot of hotels in Scotland that hadn't been invested in for a number of years. Um, so we thought, well, if we don't buy it, it's going to go into housing. So we ended up buying it and along started this long project of the design and the planning permission and everything. And uh, that is a work in progress. We hope to open it at some point in the next few years and just become a, a nice local hotel. In the meantime, as this project was dragging on, we decided to look at the local community and have a chat to them, what do they want? And they all were desperate for a bar. Funnily enough, Scotland, you know. Um, so that's what we did. And um, I don't know, Federica, if you still have the presentation open, I'll just flick over because there's two slides there that have- um... I closed it. Oh, you closed it, sorry. Okay. <laughs> Can you just oh. give me a second? I can open it. Is it? Yeah. A... It's just the last two slides, just to show a couple of pictures. Um, I'll keep talking anyway. So uh, we opened the bar in the local. Oh, no, I've got it. I've got it. Who are just absolutely fabulous. They are made up of a farming community. Um, they had not for many years had the opportunity to go somewhere with their family and socialize. And um, because we had closed the hotel down, the bar wasn't very nice in the hotel anyway. Um, they were just so supportive because they said, we haven't been able to get together because some of the farming houses are quite small, but the Glen has people who have never le left in about 30 years. So you've got the great grandparents, the grandparents and the parents. Now they come to the bar with their children and have a drink, have some food and just meet other members of the community. And it's such a lovely, warm, tight knit community. Um, they've been very supportive of us. That's brilliant. Right, it's just some interiors, if you wouldn't mind you, but yeah, so there it is. So we, there's a wood burning stove. Um, this was just one of the steadings that we had next to the hotel that we converted. And we wanted it to look like you've just walked in to an old bar and um, we didn't want to make it look brand new. So we used some refurbished um, and reclaimed pieces of wood. That's the lights that are in the middle there that we just found lying around um, where the saddle is. That's also a piece of wood that was just lying around on the site. So um, we try and just reuse some of the history of the, the area. Yeah, no, it's really beautiful. And it's a fantastic place as well that clients can relax when they're, you know, being hosted by you in uh, Canter Craig, but also with the hotel be perfect for an overflow if there's, you know, a family that are a little bit larger or if they have extra staff, they need to stay somewhere nearby. So that's fantastic. So thank you, Lynn, for sharing all of that with thank us. You. We're getting a lot of comments coming in, which we can answer at the end, but let's go over to Yvonne in Turin Castle. Hello, good evening, everyone from Turin. Um, thanks, Lynn and Sally and, and everyone for listening in. Um, I'm going to share, I don't have a video that's short enough to share with you, so I'm just going to share a presentation, um, if you will bear with me. Um, this is Turin Castle. We're located right in the heart of Angus, which is kind of between um, Aberdeen Airport and Edinburgh Airport. We sit in 20 acres of land. We're 10 bedrooms. Um, 
plus we have an event space, which is maybe a little bit different from the others. We also do uh, destination weddings as well as private clients for exclusive use. Um, as you can see right in front of the castle, we've got a huge lawn. We have had um, a client that landed three helicopters all at once right there one day. So um, it was kind of spectacular. We quite often have helicopter landings. Um, it's just we're an hour 20 from Edinburgh Airport. So it's kind of a nice short trip if anyone wants to get, get home quickly. Um, this picture here was basically unedited, believe it or not. That was taken in June. Um, we were set up for a wedding. We do lots of events in the um, stone circle that you can see on the left. It's kind of raised. It is the most amazing place in the evenings. We have some rules at Turin, and one of them is you've got to have a malt whiskey by the fire at the stone circle after dinner. Um, so rain or shine, we um, always welcome guests to go down there after they've had dinner. Um, but that's a great shot simply because it's unedited. That literally was the colours that day. Um, I'll just sort of whiz through some of these. This is our library, obviously just full of historic books. Um, we welcome people to just stay there and spend the day. Um, there's so much to do around the estate um, that um, people just love to come to the area. Um, again, like um, Sally and Lynn's properties, it's about it being a home. Um, we live here, the same scenario, welcome guests. I mean, we lived in South Africa and we bought this property as a business because I always need a project. So I wanted to have something I could get my teeth into when I moved back to Scotland. And we opened up for weddings and private use um, because we wanted to keep in touch with our international roots. We've lived all over the world, so it was kind of cool to come back. That's an overhead shot of the stone circle. You'll see on the right the um, white rhododendron flowers. It's the perfect aisle if anyone wants to get married or remarried. Um, again, our Scottish tartan um, lounge, it's called, and the music room, which I'm sitting in tonight we've got a grand piano we've had some famous performers in there over the years that have worked with our our guests um, breakfast is served in the conservatory um, everything in the property we we can sleep up to 21 guests plus children um, that's a shot on the right of our um, one of our butlers um, and he's setting up for a Kaylee in the event space the event space seats about 100 people, but when we have private clients in, they don't necessarily use the event space at all. But if, if they want to and the weather's really bad, we have an infrared sauna in there. We have badminton, table tennis, you name it. Um, this is our own private bar and games room. Um, we don't have a whiskey lounge, we have a whiskey cellar. So we've got a wine cellar that you can dine in, an extensive selection of wines, and then underground we have a great whiskey cellar. So people love to go down and just have a little, a little taster. Um, and one of my projects, a little bit like Glenn and Sally, we've made loads of changes um, at Turin since we bought it. And this, the cellar was literally flooded with water when we arrived. Um, it had actually live frogs living in it, believe it or not, because it was so neglected. So we cleaned it up, drained it all out um, and uh, turned it into an experience. When you come to Turin, we love our clients to get surprises. So sometimes we don't tell them everything we've got. Maybe day three, we'll say, okay, come into the whiskey cellar or, enjoy the wine cellar. It just depends who the client is. Um, we have a six hole golf course. Um, when we bought Turin, we thought we'd pick the whiskey trail or the golf trail as we called it, so that it was a great place for people to come on, on vacation. Um, we ended up on the golf trail. We're completely surrounded by golf courses. We're close to the beach. We're close to hunting grounds. 
but golf really is is our thing. You can practice before you go and play on the big championship courses. Um, everyone that's come to stay just loves just playing around the castle. We've recently installed a bowl court as well, which is kind of added to the fun. Um, there's the, the um, fire pit. This is our uh, tartan courtyard. It used to be where the horses were kept. The property was built in 1659 and we have a bell tower here at the back, but we've carpeted it and we do smaller Kayleys in here maybe a dining experience that's something a little different, but we also do dancing, exhibitions, whatever. But everyone at Turin gets a kilt and a pair of wellies um, made to fit. So when they check in, um, we have a little rule at Turin that everyone must wear a kilt. Um, and it's a great icebreaker. We get everyone's measurements before they come and it's hanging in, the, um, in their wardrobe when they arrive. So it's, it's just a fun thing. Sometimes people take us very seriously and wear it for the entire stay. So it's, it's lots of fun. Um, we just built this woodland area specifically for a Californian bride who's gonna get married at Turin in September this year. Now it was supposed to be last year, but obviously things have had to move forward. Um, and she's having an outlander ceremony. So we're very, very excited about that. Um, it's gonna be lots of fun with lots of tartan and lots of uh, bagpipes. But this was a setup for just a private group. Um, obviously since lockdown, they could dine outside in limited numbers. Um, Lots of um, distilleries around us. We've got gin, vodka distilleries. We've got two great whiskey distilleries within 15 minutes. Um, these are things that obviously Adams and Butler will, will advise you of what you can do around Turin and, and create great itineraries for you. This is just another idea of how many golf courses are around us. Obviously hiking, fishing, Sorry, Yvonne, would you be able to go back to the slide about the golf? Because we've had a few requests about the golf as well. Absolutely. I'm happy to share this particular slide with anyone that wants it. Um, we've got about 50 golf courses within an hour. Um, we are near, our closest golf course is Carnoustie, which was the home of the Open um, two years ago. Um, and we were rented by one of the very iconic sponsors. Uh, we've been booked uh, for four years for the um, St. Andrews Open that's coming up, it was delayed. So we're in great demand for golfers. We have a lot of um, groups from the US coming to play golf in Scotland. Fantastic, thank you. So I'm um, happy to share that. Um, we've got, I mean, you can walk on to golf courses that cost next to nothing and they're fabulous. Um, so, right back to what else is around us like the other ladies i mean we're we're in the heart of scotland we're close to everything great castles we're on the east coast of scotland we chose that specifically because it's kind of a little bit like lynn was saying and, and sally too a little bit of hidden scotland secret scotland it's off the beaten track a little bit but in a way, clients love it because they're not in the madding crowd of tourism that sometimes happens up the West Coast. Um, you never get stuck in traffic in Angus, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> um, and we're kind of looking towards more wellness experiences. We've got our sauna, we've got masses that come in, and we've got this kilted yoga offering, which is the coolest thing on the planet. We've done it several times for Russian guests that have arrived and it's a real talking point because they're excellent at what they do. Um, that's just a map to show where, where we are and that's Turin just lit up at night and that's just our, our thing. The thing about Turin is we're family run, um, but we're completely, and I hate to use the word bespoke, but our team is tailored to who the client is. We don't have chefs in house all the time because we're off duty, we're a family home. So we've got that opportunity to tailor the stay to the client. Because if you bring someone from Dallas, Texas 
to stay at Turin, they're going to have a different requirement to someone from St. Petersburg in Russia. So we love to tailor the team to suit the client. And we kind of lived all over the world. So um, it's kind of nice to come home and and be able to share Scotland with, with our guests from overseas. So, and so that's who we are. Brilliant. And Yvonne, we have another question. What tartan, do you have a clan tartan at Turin? Or what tartan do you use? Oh, that's really interesting. Um, during lockdown, we've all been sort of changing our, our, um, our business plans because we've had to. And um, before lockdown, I had this idea that I'd like to create a Turin tartan. So um, I'm absolutely delighted to announce that we're just releasing that now. Um, we're going to have lots of bits and pieces to take away as reminders for our clients. So we've designed our own tartan. Um, obviously, if anyone's interested, get in touch with Adamson Butler. We'll happily um, show you what we're up to. We'll be launching it pretty soon. It all sort of slowed down during lockdown because the mills were closed, but it's all 100% local. We're using uh, cashmere. We've got local weavers. We're really excited about it. It's something different. And of course, I don't know, most people that know me know I'm kind of famous for red lipstick. So no guesses to know what the background color is <laughs> on my tartan. <laughs> um, there's a, another question. How far are you from Edinburgh and Glasgow Airport? Um, from Glasgow, we're two hours. So we're about just a little over two hours from um, Sally's venue and uh, Glasgow Airport. We're an hour 20 north of Edinburgh. But the closest airport is Aberdeen, a little bit like Lynn. Lynn's north of Aberdeen, I'm south of Aberdeen. So actually, the three properties are just, as, as, as Siobhan said in the beginning, were in different areas. Lynn's in the whiskey area. Sally and I have got golf and everything else around us, whiskey, you name it. But um, it's kind of cool. It's a, it's a nice road trip. And uh, as I say, we've, we've really enjoyed working together and supporting each other, other through this um, this pandemic basically and and it's just I think brought everyone closer together Siobhan it's always great to talk to you we've seen each other around the world and and now it's just great to be working with you guys and and to join today so thanks so much I oh, know it's fantastic and it's it's great that you can see the passion that all three of you have for the properties and like you know that once you have a client staying with you that you're going to spoil them rotten and they're going to come out wondering when they can come back and um, the other thing as well is that I think post-covid like what we're tend to seeing in our uh, queries coming in is people want to go off the beaten track they also want to support local when they travel and they want to feel there's a sustainable element as well so that's great to hear you know those um themes being touched upon as well in all of the properties and um, we work very closely with travel advisors as you all know and one of the things we've always done in adams and butler is protect the travel advisor so for that reason when we have these wonderful properties on our website we change the name to a local name so uh, Richard has put uh, the three links uh, for the properties on our website so if you want to share them with clients um, you won't have to worry about the clients going directly to the properties and um, so we've put the, the links up there but we'll also be sending out the videos with the recording as well so um, it seems such a long time Sally since you talked and we've talked to you here so is there anything that you'd like to add in particular um, you know because uh, it's an hour ago at this stage well, it is, and I, I wish in a way, I mean, at the beginning, I didn't say I didn't want to do a presentation. Um, I know our, our Siobhan is, is online there somewhere. Um, so you actually haven't had much chance to see what we actually, what the house looks like from the outside or what we offer on the insides. But hopefully you'll see from the link from um, Adams and Butler uh, to our website. So you will actually be able to see that. I mean, we are also in a golfing area like um, Yvonne is. Um, and we also are, we've got our Green Tourism Award, uh, Silver, we're almost at goal, so we're thrilled about that. Um, so we're very keen on sustainability as well. And of course, we're only 30 minutes from Glasgow and we'll be hosting, not we personally, but COP26, the big um, energy and climate conference in Glasgow in November this year. So we've been walking, working very closely with them to make sure we are as sustainable as possible even though we live in a 900 year old castle. So uh, it has its challenges, but it's fun 
you know, working towards um, achieving that as well. Um, sorry, just remind me, because I always think you're close to Press Week as well, aren't you? If people had a private jet coming yes. in. Yes, we are. We are um, 25 minutes from Prestwick, 25 minutes from, from Glasgow as well. We sit in the middle of both of them. Yeah. So we can pick up clients airside. It's not a problem. And, and also the other thing, uh, all our staff here have signed confidentiality agreements. Uh, nobody discusses anything. We have had guests here who nobody has ever known they've been. And if we can succeed in doing that, have clients and guests arriving, uh, they enjoy themselves, but they nobody knows that they've actually been here. And that's another important thing for us to keep the privacy um, part of it as well. Fantastic. So if um, we we had over 215 people who are actually on the webinar uh, throughout in total, and uh, there's still uh, almost 180 people still on. So if anyone wants to uh, unmute themselves and to ask one of the owners a question, you're more than welcome to do so. Hi, this is Amy Chen, and I'm calling from Nashville, Tennessee. And I just want to say that I am so glad you all are willing to share your properties with us and have our clients come there. These are amazing, beautiful properties that without working with you, we would never be able to share with our clients. So thank you so very, very much. They're gorgeous. You all did a wonderful job presenting. Um, and I have to hop off for another call, but I just really wanted to thank you and I can't wait to, to work with the group to get some of my clients there. Thank you. Thank you, Amy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I think that's why it's important that people meet the owners as well, because you all make it happen. And once the owner is passionate, you know, you just know immediately that you've made the right decision. I have a question for Yvonne. The, uh, on the tartan, uh, we have, uh, I have a lot of friends that are, uh, we're all into the Renaissance festivals. So we, uh -huh. a lot of us have our own tartan kilts. And the question is, will we, uh, is it, uh, will we still get a torn uh, kilt, even though we may be bringing our own? Oh, I'm, <laughs> <laughs> that's cheat. That's greedy. <laughs> um, <laughs> absolutely. No, we, we absolutely insist that people wear kilts at Turin. It really is part of the fun. Um, we actually, uh, just a couple of months ago, we had some Russian clients came and we put the uh, kilts in their rooms. And in the end, the entire family have ordered kilts for themselves because they enjoyed wearing them so much. And, and obviously they live in Russia, between Russia and the US. So it's, it's kind of cool. It's a fun, it's just a fun thing. It's, it's a real icebreaker. Um, someone said they had a longer recording. Was that yourself, Yvonne? I'm sorry? You had said you did a longer video as well. I do have a video. It's, yeah. it's so what we might do is we might send it out to the recording if you want to send it on to us as well. And then Sally, we will find the clip from the old webinar and we'll send okay. it out with the recording as well. We and if you liaise with Siobhan about that, because we, uh, as well, that would be fantastic. Thank you. So um, if there's any more questions, if not, just to say next week, we're covering Jewish Ireland and um, we'll be sending out the invitations for that probably tomorrow. And um, we're absolutely delighted that these three wonderful ladies, as well as Frederica and uh, Siobhan joined us this evening, because I know it matters a lot to the travel advisors to have the sort of like privileged access to private places. Um, and to get, you know, behind the scenes in the know uh, information and experience. So thank you very much to everyone. Thank you very much to everyone for joining us and uh, to Gio for organizing the event and then to Richard and to Rachel on the spotlight and uh, admitting people. So thank you all and we shall see you next week. Lovely. Thank you so thank much. You. Oh, thank thank you. you. Good to meet everyone. Bye. 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 Bye.